We're going to look at how to add together two vectors using something called the component method. The question we're going to answer is as follows. Vector A is 18.9 units long, that is the length of vector A, and it is at an angle of 32 degrees north of the east line. Vector B is 8.2 units long, and it is at an angle of 76 degrees north of the east line. And the question we're trying to answer is, what is the magnitude and direction of A plus B? When you add two vectors, you have to draw them together tip to tail. Not tail to tail, like I'm showing you on the screen. That won't work. That won't give you an answer that has any meaning. We want to add them tip to tail. The tip of vector A, which is the arrowhead, has to attach to the tail of vector B, just like I've drawn. So the way I've drawn it here, this is vector A, this is vector B, and what we're looking for is the resultant, or the final answer. Now the resultant always points from where I started the diagram, down here in the lower left, towards where I finished, and it's a vector as well, so you need an arrowhead on it. The resultant in this question will be this green arrow that I'm showing you on the screen. And the question is, how can I work this out given my initial information using something called the component method? Well, the way you want to do this is break down each of these vectors into their components. In other words, break down the vectors into little right triangles that have a horizontal and a vertical component. And it, once you've done that, it's fairly easy. Let's look at how this works. To get started and to simplify the question, we're going to remove the green resultant vector for now and just focus on our individual vectors one at a time. There's vector A and then we'll put vector B over here. Now vector A consists of an 18.9 unit long vector at an angle of 32 degrees north of the east line. And it will contain an x component and a y component that we need to determine using a calculator. And it's with simple trigonometry that we do this. So I'm going to draw in my x and y components. We're trying to figure out what this value is here. This is our x component, and this value here, our y. Now, you can imagine there's an origin right at the start of any vector. So anything to the right of that origin, imagine we've got a little coordinate system here where this is our origin. Anything to the right will be positive, and up will be positive. If this vector was pointed downwards, we'd have a positive x and a negative y, for example. And I'll come back to that in the second example. So let's figure out our x component. We have a hypotenuse of 18.9, an angle of 32 degrees, and I want to figure out this component here. This is the adjacent side to our angle. So if we know adjacent and hypotenuse, we want to use the function cos. So cos 32 degrees is equal to x over 18.9 and when we solve for x we get x is equal to 18.9 times cos 32 which is 16.03 units long or roughly 16 so our x component here is 16 units similarly if we want to do the y the y is opposite the angle we're still using the hypotenuse so we're going to use the sine function Sine 32 is y over 18.9. So our y component will be 18.9 times sine 32, which is 10.02 units long, or roughly 10. So we've got an x component of 16 and a y component of 10. Now similarly, if we do the other vector, and we'll just round off appropriately, this side we'd use the cos, and this side we'd use the sine, just like we did with the previous one. We get an x component of 2 here, and a y component of 8. Now remember, this one's using an angle of 76 degrees. So we've got 8.2 cos 76, for example, to get my x component. Now if I put the vectors back together again, you should be able to see what we're going to have to do with these components. In order for us to figure out the overall value, this green vector here, and I'll put it aside for now. So those two added together tip to tail equals this green vector. Notice the green vector itself has an x component and a y component. Well, what makes up the x component? Vector a is x and vector b is x. And in fact, our overall x is ax plus bx, which would be this green vector's x component. So we have 16 plus 2 
we get an x component on our green vector of roughly 18. Similarly, we can see our y component will simply be ay plus by. And we'll end up getting an overall y component of 10 plus 8, giving us 18. Our overall y component for our green vector is 18. Now obviously if we know the x and we know the y, the only thing left is a little bit of Pythagoras to get our overall resultant. Let's label our resultant r. r squared will be equal to 18 squared plus 18 squared. Therefore r is the square root of 18 squared plus 18 squared. And we get a value of r of roughly 25.5. What about the angle? We're trying to find theta. We know the opposite and we know the adjacent. So we're going to use tan. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So tan theta is 18 over 18, which means theta is tan inverse of 18 over 18, which is 45 degrees. So putting it into words, our final resultant vector is 25.5 at 45 degrees north of the east line. And the last thing we want to do is show you that it actually does work. If I place my resultant in where it belongs, you see that the overall x is just the two x's added together, and the overall y of my green vector is the two y's added together. So to summarize the component method, you add up the x's, you add up the y's to get your overall x and overall y, and then it always ends with Pythagoras and tan theta to find your direction.